Dominic Conroy from Modern English, and you're listening to Jim and My Talk Music. special guest. He's one of the co-founders of the 1980s new wave band Modern English. They had a big hit in the U.S. back in 1983 with the song I Melt With You. He also performed with the band Lush and in 2018 he formed the band Poroshka with Lush lead singer Miki Berenyi. Let's welcome the Jim and Mike Talk Music, Mr. Mick Conroy. And the crowd goes wild. (laughs) <laughs> how are you today i i'm very good thank yes, you yes it's, yes yes um, so uh, i'm in uh upstate new york uh, so okay. we've been out we've been to a barn sale and tag sales and all that stuff you know doing a saturday morning stuff so it's yeah. all good yeah good weather for that i was going to ask you about new jersey yes. yeah <laughs> well oh, i i haven't been to new jersey for uh a, we were there about a month ago oh okay. seeing a friend Okay. West Orange. So are you, li- are you living in New York right now, New York State? Yes, I'm uh, upstate uh, mm-hmm. uh, in uh, uh, Columbia County. It's uh, very nice. It took me, I mean, I, I got here about two months ago from uh, in, kind of like half in England, half here mm-hmm. at the same time. So yeah. let's talk about your early days in music. You were born in England okay. in the early 60s in Colchester, uh, Essex, England, correct? That, that's where the band, that's, I, I was actually get this, I was born in Aden in southern Yemen, in okay. Yemen, which uh, my dad was in, was in the army, but uh, that we ended up in Colchester, okay. which uh, coincided with um, uh, the birth of punk rock, which was mm-hmm. quite handy, which meant that um, <laughs> anyone that found themselves could uh, pick up a guitar uh-huh. and if you could play two chords that was enough to get you into a group yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's in fact a, one chord was enough yeah to yeah get it's into a, a group <laughs> it's about the attitude so born in yemen you have citizenship where then in the uk uh uk and ireland so what kind of yeah. music were you listening to when you were uh young <clears throat> like a teenager uh well you uh slade uh okay. Slade, <laughs> uh, Deep Purple, Deep, Deep Purple, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, well, okay. uh, Slade, Slade were my uh, favorite band, and then um, uh, the, uh, you know, it didn't take long, you know, Alice Cooper, mm-hmm. uh, yep. stuff yeah, like that, Alice kind Cooper. of like you know, English, English, uh, you know, bands that uh, were quite popular in England. Um, then, okay. of course, David Bowie, which yeah. uh, you know, with, with uh, David Bowie was a consistent thing, and Roxy Music. Mm-hmm, yeah, I used right. to, um, you know, David Bowie and Roxy Music were the, when I, when I was kind of like, had enough money or it was, you know, Christmas, if I got LPs, it would be David Bowie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My first record I had was uh, Aladdin Sane, the Bowie right. album, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, Gene Genie, Driving yeah. Saturday and all of them. And yeah, then, yeah. Um, uh, but I, I had an old, older brother who was... Um, into um, uh, Yes and Genesis, right, and uh, right. ELP, you know, kind mm-hmm. of like the you know Foggy, Lake and Palmer type yeah. stuff as well. Oh yeah, 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 and um, you know, crazy triple albums and you know, art, <laughs> right, and, you know, record <laughs> sleeves, uh, right, right, you mm-hmm. know that you, you know, and, and then I, um, uh, me and my brother, we went to a boarding school in England, and. Um, it was uh, quite a musical school, but there weren't that many kids there. You know, it was about 360 boys. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, you know, it was, um, uh, you know, it was, everyone was into music. You know, we, you know you'd go around to other, other mates, you know, they lived in other, you know, dormitories. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, there'd be a group of people that were into, um, you know, only Motown, you know, so mm-hmm. you'd hear kind of like, you know, you, Diana Ross, Marvin Gaye, and um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and 
kind of like you know more more dance type music then there'd be people that were only into uh funk mm-hmm. you know, so it'd be like all yeah. we do is brass construction yeah. and so <laughs> and then there'd be like heavy metal people you know like led zeppelin and um you know black sabbath i mean i i i I did have a Masters of Reality when I was about <laughs> mm-hmm. 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was, I mean, which is pretty out there. You know, I'd listen to Masters of Reality and then, um, you know, Nursery Crimes by Genesis and then listen mm-hmm. to a David Lye. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you were that young, you were still kind of exploring. And then um, uh, Velvet Underground and Lou Reed. I mean, right, Lou right. Reed had a great big hit, Walk on the Wild Side, that was oh, yeah. produced by... Um, David Bowie and Mick Ronson. So mm-hmm. you know, anything that David Bowie had anything to do with, like Mott the Hoople yeah. as well, all the young dudes. Mm-hmm. So then I got into Mott the Hoople mm-hmm. as well. And, yeah. Um, but, a lot of the know, ones not you long meant... after... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's sorry. a little de- there's a little delay here. There's about a second or two delay. Uh, so I don't mean to talk over you. Uh, a lot of the ones you mentioned, especially early on when you mentioned Roxy Music and David Bowie, uh, and now Lou Reed, you know, it's a lot of cutting edge, you know, they are, they are definitely doing what they want, you know, it's, it, they're putting yeah. that out there. I mean, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, it, when I first heard Walk on the Wild Side, it really was like one of those moments where, um, you know, what the hell's going on here? You know, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. and, it, and, and, you know, around about the same time, also Barn by Kraftwerk, who, um, you know, when I first yeah, heard yeah. that, mm-hmm. yeah. when I first heard that, it was a similar kind of thing. It was like, yeah. you know, there's no guitars and yeah. the drums sound really weird. Yeah. You know, so, so we're cutting yeah. edge, industrial that, and, and such. And I think I think we all go, you know, we everybody goes through this progression. You know, Jim and I were into, uh, you know, I was into the Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and mm-hmm. then Aerosmith, Boston and, you know, just all that, you know, and then you and you get turned on to something else like you said you hear walk on the wild side and you're like what what's he saying, what's he saying? and were the were the stations yeah. playing were the stations playing like craft work or you were out exploring um you know buying albums well, or friends turned you well, on to well, different well, kinds of music well it was at, 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 in england at that time there was um there was a radio, there was two two stations. There was one called Radio Luxembourg, mm-hmm. which was kind of like pop-ish, but they'd play album tracks all the time. And then there was a, uh, what was called the pirate station called Radio Caroline. I don't know if okay. you've ever heard of that no, station. No. I've heard of Radio it was, uh, it was Radio Caroline was um, really um, uh, what, uh, before punk rock happened, that was where you'd hear uh, they'd play like side two of Tales of the Topographic Ocean, you know, by mm-hmm. Yes, and then they'd play, mm-hmm. wow. you know, uh, a whole side of ELP. Yeah. And, um, so okay. there, there was this station, but also at the, there was this guy, John Peel, who um, mm-hmm. you probably heard, an yeah, English right. DJ. Mm-hmm. He, he would always play um, at uh, 10 o'clock to midnight he would always play um, kind of like music that was, you know, when you were a kid, everything was like brand new, you know, you'd never heard. Mm-hmm. I mean, he'd, he'd play um, uh, Funkadelic yeah. and uh, Parliament and then yeah. play lots of sly and reggae stuff as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, you, you kind of like, you'd listen to stuff and wait for him to play something that you might have even heard before. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, quite often it was, um, it was all stuff that, you know. A whole buffet yeah. of music to, to try, yeah. Oh, yeah, completely, completely. I mean, John Peel, when uh, previously he did, he really championed Mark Bolan as well, T-Rex, mm-hmm. who um, yeah. was produced by... Oh, there's a Bowie connection there. Him and Bowie were mates, and Tony Visconti, who produced like the best Bowie albums, also produced the really early T Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex mm-hmm. records. He, even though Tony Visconti was an American, he moved to London in the early seventies, and uh, he he was like um, he was out looking for new bands to um, record and produce as well. So uh, yeah. anything that had Tony Visconti's name on it was, you know, in those days, you'd look at the back of the record sleeve to see the oh, credits, yeah. you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> he, who played the cello on on the, yeah. the, the record right. even you know you'd want, right. you'd want all the information possible and that's what we missed, but, uh, especially with streaming. We're missing that. And now getting back to vinyl, you know, it isn't just about the cover artwork. It's like you said, who paid, who played cello on track four? You know, what, who was that? Oh, there, you know, there it is. You know, we missed that for maybe, a while. Maybe eventually they'll add that, you know, Apple, Apple music just <laughs> added, added lyrics. Yeah. You can, you can click on and yeah. the lyrics will come up. Yeah. It's good stuff. So maybe eventually they'll I, add. I, I know. I, um, I, I kind of, di- I, I've been discovering that lately. It's like it, you kind of accidentally touch your iPad and suddenly <laughs> yeah. you've got lyrics. Oh, yeah. yeah. There it is. Yeah. Kind of, so you can sing along. Do you know, do you know so yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, yesterday I was just, uh, have you heard of uh, My Bloody Valentine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've heard of them. Okay. Right. So I was listening to their first album, uh, sorry, their second album yesterday. And the lyrics are, you've got no idea. They could be singing, you know, what the ingredients of cornflakes are. <laughs> no. But I accidentally pressed the lyric thing and it had all the words coming up. You know, and I was thinking, hey, that's what they're possibly saying. Yeah. Uh, just probably a month or so ago, on one of our podcasts, we were talking about the uh, top hits from 50 years ago. And so, you know, I thought David Bowie was scatting on Golden Years. And uh, I thought he was doing a little scat there, my, you know, because it was an early album, a 45 that I had when I was one of my first albums ever. Let's see, Jim, was it uh, Come What Up, My Baby? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I thought he was just scatting, but it's it's uh, something like uh, Come Something, My Baby. Yeah, but I thought he was just Come What Up, yeah, My yeah. Baby. Yeah, it's like there it is there's in the words, lyrics. There's words in there. Yeah, there's actual <laughs> words. <laughs> Golden years. Yeah, so interesting. So you're talking about some early times here. So, you know, I'm thinking about the the first band you were in and how uh, or, or how how modern English is first. The, the lepers uh, were, were they the lepers first and then you joined them. Is that right? <laughs> well, they, they were the lepers and right. um, I joined I, I joined them whilst they were still the, the lepers. OK, so I, I was a leper as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By this time, you know, punk rock had kind of, um, you know, Sex Pistols and The Clash and all of that had, um, right. they'd all released their first albums. And um, then we, uh, th- there was bands like, um, uh, you know, Susie and the Banshees mm-hmm. right. and Wire mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, the, and Joy Division and, right. you know, Bauhaus who were coming along, who were kind of like, who, he joined, you know, they joined bands when punk rock was happening. And of course, you learn how to play your instruments a bit more, and um, you know you kind of tune up <laughs> as well. You know, so um, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, you know, our, our 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 path changed. You know, we kind of like wanted to be, you know, uh, you know, we wanted to keep ourselves more interested. You know, playing punk rock wasn't going to last no, more yeah. than you know a year. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So. Um, I mean, it, we, we, you know, we still had, uh, you know, we were either on the dole or had jobs. We um, recorded our first bunch of demos. And when we went into the studio, we were called the Lepers. And what we recorded was completely and utterly un, you know, <laughs> punk rock. It was kind of like quite experimental. Mm-hmm, right. We thought, well, we've, we can't put, we've got to change, we've got to come up with a name. Basically, it was a, a we, come, we were like, brainstorming mm-hmm. which we didn't know it was called brainstorming at the time in those yeah. days it was called arguing and uh, so <laughs> we, we call ended it brainstorming up with, you know, here in the u.s yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we we called it um we ended up with the name modern english we um uh, sent loads of uh, demo tapes uh, john peel actually we sent a demo mm-hmm. tape to then uh we'd um we did our first single on our own uh, drowning man which was, mm-hmm. I mean, if you listen to it quite, uh, you know, more than two times, you'll realise that we didn't tune up <laughs> before we <laughs> recorded it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, that sounded good. Let's uh, go. <laughs> uh, uh, but then um, uh, we got a reply from um, uh, uh, Beggar's Banquet, two guys that worked there who um, had uh, Gary Newman, who was like a oh, yeah. a, a major pop star. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, cutting edge, these two cutting guys, edge, seventy nine and eighty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but then uh, these two guys that worked in the record, they owned the record shop as well, Beggars Banquet. And they started their own label, Four AD, and uh, that's they they responded to us, and we um, 
you know, they sound they were really nice people, and that basically we, um, you know, they wanted to put out a record by us, and then we were mm-hmm. like, great, you know, well, um, <laughs> you know, we'll we'd love it. That's what we want to do, you know, put records yeah. out. And at that point, your sound uh, was. Uh was still a punk hard edge sound uh mixed with some other uh mixed with some other things yeah 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 i mean one of our friends worked in a record shop and uh he seemed to know a lot about music and we said mm-hmm. to him if you buy a van and a keyboard you can join <laughs> our band yeah there you go <laughs> and- <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for our listeners and those who are, you know, exploring music history, because, you know, we've got listeners young and old, but, you know, this is the beginning of the new wave. You know, it's what are you doing after punk? You know, what is what, you know, and this this new wave comes and uh, hence the the moniker. Yeah. The first album, uh, that was 1979. Well, that's when you got signed to the record label, right? Yeah. And yeah. Now that mesh and lace, yeah. I think that's. That sounds like an experimental album. But it was still more accessible than yes. what you were doing before. Is that what you're saying? I mean, right? it's not punk, but it's <laughs> there's a lot of different sound effects. Yeah. You're trying out all kinds of stuff on that album. I mean, the one song, yeah. Gr- Grief, uh, yeah. I think that's unique because the, the vocals don't come in until like four minutes into the song. Yeah. That's not yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. typical. <laughs> I wanted to say something about that. Uh, the um, the uh, oh, he's traveling. <laughs> Our listeners, we're getting a tour of the that, kitchen. I, very cool. Very cool. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm moving because it might be a better uh, reception at this end of the table. Okay. Tiny delay, but now yeah, now okay. Right. I sound sound better. The uh, the first album I uh, starting. Um, I believe it's the first one that we're talking about yeah, here. Mesh and Lace. Mesh and Lace. Um, I thought it was uh, courageous. It was uh, uh, pretty wild to start the first song on the first album out with a tempo changing. I'm listening to it and <laughs> it starts speeding up within uh, within one minute. Uh, I think the first minute or second minute, uh, uh, you know, we, we heard that. And uh, what's up with that? You're laughing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we didn't mean to. <laughs> we, we didn't have a click or anything oh, like right, that. Right. It was right. just kind of like so it was. We, it was you know, we we, we uh, well, there we. Do you know what? I don't even think we really noticed until like later on. Yeah, we just yeah. wanted it to have 
you know, be energetic. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that we did, I mean, we um, we didn't have much time to record that LP. Yeah. So it was, and in, in those days, we'd try and record everything live, you know, okay. like in the same room. Okay. Yes. And, uh, you know, so, so um, mm-hmm. but we rehearse, we rehearse all of the songs. So we kind of thought we've got like, you know, five takes. So we've got to get it yeah. right. Right, right. And it was almost like if everyone played the right part in the right section, that was a, a win for <laughs> us. And then, you know, if it sped up and slowed right. down, it didn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounded, if it had energy going for it, you know, we'd say that's good enough. Right, you know, right. If it sounds noisy and raucous and it has, you know, feeling as well. Right. And the first yeah, song, it, it did yeah. it did keep a good tempo and kept going consistent. And so, you know, it is it's a it's an interesting thing to try. And there it worked. You sped up and you kept it that way. So, you know, it worked. <laughs> mm-hmm. Were those songs that you already had you were playing out live or did you write some? Of them yeah. In the studio. Mm, no, uh, pretty much all of those songs we we played live. I mean, it was mm-hmm. like your first album is basically the your kind of like two years worth of songs. Oh yeah, and, everything and, you done. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, we did have one or two that but the studio dates got put back by about two weeks, and so we thought, well, let's try and write some more songs. I can't remember exactly which ones they were, but we did. There were a few there. Like I think grief was mm-hmm. uh, might have been a late edition as well. So now your your second album, even though it was um, you were signed to Four AD, right? Uh-huh. But in the in the yeah. US, it was released by Sire Records. Yeah, and Sire had um, the Cure, Depeche Mode, and even Madonna, you know, thrown in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So now the the second album was a little different than the first album, mm-hmm. and Robbie Gray is quoted as saying, we used to think God will never make a pop record. We're artists, <laughs> but things don't always turn out as you plan. And when you actually create a pop record, it's so much more of a thrill than anything else. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, for the, I mean, for the second album, we um, uh, approached Hugh Jones, who uh, had uh, produced uh, just recently, we, at that time, produced Heaven Up Here by Echo and the Bunny Men, okay, mm-hmm. which was um, a great record. And he'd also worked um, with Steve Hillage, who did um, the, quite a few Simple Minds LPs mm-hmm. from the you know before they became mega famous, yeah. you know, in in England. But they they all sounded so amazing, the sounds. And um, uh, Hugh, with Hugh, he um, we we did about. The opposite to Mesh and Lace. We actually worked with you in rehearsals. We deconstructed all of the songs and put them back together again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, in some cases, we'd take out a section from one song and put that in a different song completely. Oh, okay. And so, so the whole thing was like edited together yeah. and taken apart and re edited together before we got into the studio. And um, with um, I'm Out with you. Uh, he, he said, have you got any more songs, you know, that we need to look at? Mm-hmm. And I said, well, there's this one thing that we've got kicking around. But I think it sounds a bit too poppy anyway. And mm-hmm. uh, we, we played it to him. And Hugh said, you're out of your mind. You know, we've, this is, we've got to work on this song. <laughs> and um, then we, we, we just carried on. But when we recorded the LP, I mean, that wasn't one of the most kind of like the best songs, most interesting songs for us to work on. It we we considered it to be part of the album, but a bit kind of like um, uh, Birds REM Radio Free Europe type, mm-hmm. you know, kind of feel to it. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we had no idea what was going to happen. Absolutely mm-hmm. no clue whatsoever. You know, then it uh, the reason it came out on Sire was because um, you know they, Sire had a. Uh, Talking Heads and the Ramones, you know, yeah. two of my favorite bands as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, for well, you know, what a cool label to be on. And, um, oh, yeah, they it's funny, funny you should mention Madonna. I saw her first, um, <laughs> public performance as Madonna on Sire at uh, Danceteria, and uh, she oh. did uh, Everybody Come and Dance with Me, I think, with a couple of dancers she mined as well <laughs> <laughs> it's like the opposite of scatting it's miming mm-hmm. yeah. Her lip-syncing. <laughs> yeah yeah 
yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. It's great to hear uh, your 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 love for all these other bands too. And uh, like you said, Talking Heads and REM and you know, Jim and I have had all the other bands that you've mentioned, you know, we've had them on vinyl as well. And uh, it's a great connection. Great okay. to hear what it's like in the studio. So for that second album, you know, just really taking it apart, putting things back together again. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. With a click. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the song I Melt With You, which if anybody doesn't know this song, yeah. you know, I don't know where you've been, but... <laughs> Is this a song that you felt could be a hit or did this stand out over all the other songs or, or did well, it just happen? It was, um, well, no, it can't, it, we, we um, went to Wales, uh, Rockfield Studios in Wales. It's the oldest, where uh, Zeppelin recorded a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, we um, went, we were away for six weeks and we were like in a cocoon in a bubble. Right, right, doing that and, recording. Uh, it, when we, yeah, and then when we got back to London, we um, you know, we played it to some friends, and uh, uh, you know, some some people were a bit like, "Oh, this is a bit poppy, isn't it?" Mm-hmm. And other people were like, "One of my two people in particular uh, were um, when they first heard it, you know, they thought, "Wow, this is incredible! It's like it sounds like you lot learned how to write songs <laughs> suddenly." <laughs> Uh, well, it's not always the most interesting songs that make the hits. You know, I melt with you is, you know, boom, click, boom, click, boom, click. You know, people, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they like that. There's a certain, the certain boom, boom click tempo. Time. Yeah. That, that's like, yeah, okay. I like this, you know, but it's, it's not that interesting, you know, wild, wild drumming and, and interesting, uh, you know, <laughs> bass solo. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. but it, but it, but yeah. it's yeah. Sure, you flow around. You know, you're flowing around on the bass, and people are hearing that. I think, but uh, but yeah, you didn't. It's a surprise to you. That's it's so it's so interesting that the number one hit there is a, yeah, a surprise. Yeah. We had no idea. But... Yeah, no idea. Now, do you know this song is ranked at number thirty nine on VH1's top one hundred greatest songs of the eighties? Cool. Oh, really, I thought you were <laughs> yes. gonna. Uh, I thought you were going to say the greatest one hit, one hit wonders. No, of the no, no. <laughs> That's a terrible phrase, isn't it? But That's this, a terrible but this, this <laughs> song has a life of its own. And, yes, and yes. I have to tell you, tell when, us about it, Jim. This this song it, is is yeah. It's I've, a I've always loved this song. I mean, whenever you hear it, you obviously think of the eighties. Mm-hmm. But it's a song that you can't get out of your head either, and it's a good thing because it's a good song. <laughs> When you can't get a bad song out of your head. Yeah, right? yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. we won't mention the the unmentionables. But the, this song yeah, okay. has lived on in that. I mean, it was in Valley Girl, which was a while ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Stranger Things. And just a week or two ago, it was on Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Do you know that, Mick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the season okay. finale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. You yeah. saw that. I know. I, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, um, I, you know, Robbie's back in uh, England, and I, mm-hmm. um, you know, mm-hmm. me and him, we, you know, messengering and all that. And yeah, I yeah. said to Rob, it's, "It's, it's, quite a big deal, Robbie. You know, it's in mm-hmm. USA Today and TV Insider magazine." Yeah, it came you up know, on they, my phone. I'm, I'm looking and I'm thinking about Mick. You know, it's on my phone right there. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys did a better job than she did. I mean, some of the people on that show. <laughs> do you do you watch that show though, or did Jim you watches just... all the time? I just catch a little bit, but he... I've watched it from the beginning. So, mm-hmm. oh really? Yeah. No, I'm. A, I, I I have to confess that I am. Um, 
I haven't, you know, I don't, I'm not a, a follower of that show. It's but, an interesting um, I, show, I, I, I'm not, you know. Yeah. I mean, she, yeah. she hears what people are thinking, but in a song, like time stops. Mm -hmm. But the finale and spoiler alert is that. Spoiler alert. For the first time, her, it was her ex-boyfriend uh, sort of on off. He can hear her singing this song. And that's different. She's not just singing the song like, you know, people around like nobody else can hear it but him, which is which is odd. So now he's got the power through I Melt With You. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that was bike. the grand finale. Yeah. I know. I know. I mean, it was. Um, it, yeah. I mean, that, it's. Uh, I mean, that song has a. A life of its own. Oh yeah, you know, it's like something, something that recreated. I mean, people mm -hmm. say you hear it all the time. You know, it's like, it's um, you know, it's it's out there mm -hmm. now without sounding too much like a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it's every, you know, it's everyone's song now. Yeah. Really, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about being out at clubs and uh, being a young adult, and uh, you know that song comes on along with along with some others. Cause you know, if you're in a, at the time, if you're in a, a cool new wave alternative club versus just the regular pop clubs, um, I don't know what year this would be. I guess it'd be 85, 1985 or something. Yeah. Um, no, no, I don't mean when it come out, oh, but okay. yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, playing the song in clubs and stuff and uh, you know, that would get people out on the dance floor, you know, that that's, there's, it's just, you know, one, you know, you can sit back and listen to and talk to somebody or you can get out there and dance. And I think it, it brought the people out. Let's switch over to, if I can, uh, switch over to uh, playing live. You were, uh, what? Do you have any uh, a story from a time you were out playing live? Something, uh, something a little bit uh, we haven't heard before. Uh, anything like that? Well, um, we. I mean, this is kind of like going back to that period. Where, yeah. So, I mean, when when we were in um, England and Europe, we, uh, you know, we were pretty much seen as like a 4AD type band. So there was like us, the Cocteau Twins, mm -hmm. uh, the Birthday Party, which was Nick Cave's band, and Bauhaus. And uh, so the audiences were, um, uh, you know, it's almost like if you could imagine Lisa Simpson, you know, in a beret and a cigarette being very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like that kind of thing. And then um, we came to Florida to play this thing called Spring Break that we've mm -hmm. never heard of. <laughs> yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's and, different. Uh, that's very different then. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know. And uh, we, um, we'd, we'd previously played in uh, London at the Institute of Contemporary Art. Sounds very grand. And uh, so we did the same set in, Fort, in Daytona Beach. Mm -hmm. So I Melt With You was like the fifth song in in the sense mm -hmm. yeah and so we were playing you know our doom and gloomy type stuff yeah. and then uh, we played i melt you and the entire place <laughs> went completely insane yeah, you know, right we, i can well, picture we'd, we'd never seen anything like it before in you know e yeah. ever yeah and uh we, me and robbie were just dumbstruck yeah you know, we were like staring at each other like what the <laughs> hell is yeah yeah and Jim and I can imagine that because, you know, Jim and I, Jim and I lived yeah. that. And so we can imagine that, that the general population, because you are, you are not, that is not an alternative new wave punk crowd. This is, you have about three quarters yeah. of them being pop, being just in, you know, they just yeah. want to know yeah. the latest dance and Paula Abdul and Madonna and Michael mm -hmm. Jackson. Yeah. And so, and so about one quarter of them would know some uh, what we used to call really cool music, you know. And so that that that's uh, you got three quarters of them up knowing I know this song. Mm -hmm. I know this song. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is so cool. Was, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, so it, has, it has to be said that after um, that night, uh, we uh, put I Melt With You at the end of the set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To tease them, make them wait. Delayed gratification, yeah, yeah. kiddos. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, kind of like, you know, here's another, here's another song off our new album, kind of like, yeah, and then yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Now, was that now your first time touring the U.S.? 
No, that was how. Um, well, it's it's like uh, Mike was just saying, you know, with the, the there was like the cool cooler people that listen to WLIR, you know, in mm-hmm. Long Island, and then there'd be mm-hmm. stations in Boston. We did two tours of the East Coast, you know, like Boston to um, Washington DC mm-hmm. uh, before after the snow came out. So, uh, and it was only for people that were hardcore. 4 AD people that would buy imports and um, you right. know really um, you know listen you know look look hard for uh, you know what was happening in England kind of mm-hmm. people. Did you tour for your first album though, or, or was did the second album? Is yeah. that when you first toured the US to support the second <laughs> album? No, 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 no. We, no, we did uh, Mesh and Lace. We did uh, an East Coast tour. Oh. Okay. In. Um, uh, I mean, it was you know there weren't that many people at the gigs. I can uh, right, safely yeah, yeah. Uh, say, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, but the ones that were there were kind of like die-hard uh, mm-hmm. 4AD people and people that oh, were going okay. to see yeah. any English band. Yeah, uh, yeah. Band, yeah. And yeah. this is the time of uh, you know you're promoted by the the cool record shops, the great record stores. You know, there's the the uh, the mom and pop. You know, well, not exactly, but you know, mom yeah. and pop's son <laughs> as a cool record store. Yeah. But uh, then also college radio, you know, it was in the U.S. It was I, I didn't hear of a good uh, uh, commercial radio station playing great stuff till uh, KROQ. I think it was in uh, near L.A. because it was yeah, yeah. It, throughout the whole mid 80s. It was just college radio playing great stuff, great colleges, people yeah. putting out some really good yeah. stuff. So, yeah, that's how, you know, for our listeners, you know, wondering what's going on in this time in the mid 80s. <laughs> yeah that's what's that's what's happening so that that's where you'd be heard so it would have to be you're playing these you're playing these gigs and every dozen people that get out there to listen to college radio yeah, yeah. they're not listening to the classic right. rock yeah oh it's now the classic <laughs> yeah rock. it was uh, no. it's called rock yeah. no. I mean, we have a station no. here in, yeah. in bethlehem pennsylvania mm-hmm. we're in new jersey but it's okay. close by but I, I i'm telling you you put the radio on and it's like they have the same 50 songs they i don't know how they're still going but it is the same it is the same 50 songs from 40 years ago yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah <laughs> what were you going to say mick you had something there yeah uh, about um uh college radio i mean yeah. on on the first trip we made to America in our um, van we only had um an am radio station radio on the the, mm-hmm. in the van so i'm all sorry we to hear heard that was um <laughs> stay away to heaven so it was only the second time that, that we discovered like fm fm radio yeah and college stations so you know yeah. we, we we weren't sure what was going on either first <laughs> yeah. time we came to america modern english is it's not just a new wave band because i know i noticed some other influences musical influences and uh, just the other day, I was. There's a song. It's on everything is mad. I don't know. Are you on that no. album? Okay. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Is that a good thing, Jim? But do you <laughs> do you know the song? I can't breathe. Uh, I I I have heard it a couple of times. I'm only asking because if you aren't on the album, you might not. If you don't play the song live or something, you know, you might not know it. No, no, no. We don't play any of that live. Mm-hmm. Every... Yeah, it's like all the trees are brown, like that. Well, well now the when I first listened to it, I thought it was another song. It sounds exactly like the that. Ever the Everly Brothers, oh. Kathy's Clown. Kathy's Clown. Yeah. Okay, but, I'm gonna... but since you're not on the album, I I I guess you probably don't know much about if that was a coincidence. No, or just... mm, I well I don't know. Is you know how um, sometimes I mean. There is uh, two albums that me and Rob we uh, I I'd, um I was playing with other groups at mm-hmm. the time yeah and Robbie continued okay and um, he made he made so he made two records I think and we uh, that 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 particular album you just mentioned Robbie never ever mentions it <laughs> okay okay, okay. <laughs> well maybe this other song too is on uh, I was surprised because. Modern English does Game of Love, which is a 60s song. Yeah, not not uh, not Santana. That's not the Santana. Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders song, Game of Love. Okay. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. 
But, you know, you don't hear many, I don't think new way, like you don't hear Depeche Mode doing, uh, you know, 60 songs. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. anyway. I mean, uh, Robbie has um, uh, he, his uh, musical tastes, uh, you know, quite um, eclectic as okay. well. Okay. You know, some, yeah. some, some days he'll uh, only be into punk rock and other days he'll only be into um, uh, 10cc. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> When you perform live, do you do you work in any cover songs, or is it all modern? Uh, well, uh, we we uh, did uh, Gene Genie oh, okay. on uh, one tour. You know, when a uh, Bowie died, okay. you know, it was like everyone and their dog doing a Bowie song. So, um, yeah, that I, um, that that's about the only uh, cover that we've done. Really, mm-hmm. we, we don't do covers yeah okay. it's too much hard work yeah <laughs> if you try and do a cover song there's always someone in the audience that says that's actually an e flat minor oh, that you should yeah. have been playing yeah yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah 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 tell us a little about this 80s cruise it's next march have you have you done the cruise before yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we did one uh, uh about uh four five years ago Okay. It was, uh, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. How did it go? Oh, it was, I mean, I've, I mean, I've never been on a cruise before. It okay. Was, uh, yeah, I haven't. You know, I'd never, I'd never been to the Caribbean. You know, um, mm-hmm. I, I've got a studio in England, you know, a small space, and, um, you know, where it rains all the time and it's really cold in England. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and one, there's the Caribbean. One day yeah. I was in the, you know, I got an email from my manager and he said, fancy going on a cruise. <laughs> It was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the guests and the crowd, they uh were they uh complimentary, were they uh fun to hang out with and such? Yeah, yeah. It was um you know, it's like well, it's impossible not to have a good time when you're kind of mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, I've seen so cruising uh, you know <laughs> it's wild. I mean it was um you know, white sandy beaches with palm trees. It was like um, it was like watching a James Bond film. You know, it was like if you were from England, where uh, it rains every day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So you get you get some downtime where you can you know lay on the beach or <laughs> enjoy beach time. I'm not a beach kind of person, okay. but uh, <laughs> you know, just just being able to be there and um, feel right. the sun. You know, think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's. It's you know very very nice. Now it's probably cool to reconnect with some, maybe some of these bands that you maybe toured with too, and you haven't seen oh, yeah. in a long time. Because I think the yeah, yeah, yeah. the one in March is Berlin, the Alarm. There's like three MTV DJs. Oh, cool on there. Mm-hmm. And uh, a- ABC are going on yeah. it, I think, aren't they? Yeah. And um, uh, Belinda Carlisle oh, is yeah. going to be there as well. And and the Human League, who are yeah. um, incredible. Yeah. I, I mean, that will, you know, they Human League was a kind of bit like modern English. They started off being really weird and wacky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you get you get a hit, and uh, you know, you just uh, yeah, look at that and say, "Wow." <laughs> so there's a there's a DVD coming out. Is that correct? Modern English. Uh, it's a live DVD. Yes. And is this is this yeah. a combination we, of shows, or is it one one concert, or is it a combination? No, it's um, no, it's one concert. We um, because of you know COVID, like most people, we had a schedule planned for um, last year, and uh, we'd um, basically we uh, uh, repackaged after the mm-hmm. snow okay. and uh, mesh and lace ricochet days the, the third album and. Um, we were supposed to go on tour and play after the snow in its entirety for um, you know a tour across America, and uh, that just couldn't happen because of um, COVID. And um, yeah. Yeah. you know, it was uh, the the only way we could kind of you know we, we played together so much. You know, modern English. We rehearsed together. We you know we you know we're still old friends, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it was almost an excuse for us to get together. As well, we recorded it at um, the O2 in London at a place called Indigo, which is part of the dome in inside it. An amazing venue, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it was um, a kind of uh, it's just some. I mean, it was like normally, we, you know, each year we do about two or three tours generally. Okay, and uh, mm-hmm. so for 
months and well, a year. We've only done one concert in like a year mm-hmm. and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was quite good that we were able to kind of, um, you know, mark it, you know, and kind of say this is what we did during COVID as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. So, now, were you working on a new album during COVID or was that recorded before? Yeah. Well, that that was the recorded last uh, September. I mean, okay. there, there was um, a lot of uh, planning and production had to go into it because of... Um, you know, like in England, all of the law, you know, the rules were changing every week. You know, yeah, one minute okay. you were allowed to um, go to the shop, next minute you weren't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, kind of, you had to stay mm-hmm. at home. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, I mean, the fact that we were able to pull it off it was quite good. But me and Robbie have, um, and Gary, I mean, it was like for the last year and a half, it's been so wild. You know, it's like it's, the, the rules change all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you could you had to stay at home, or if you had a dog, you could go out twice a day, uh, take the dog yeah. for a walk. Yeah, get a dog. <laughs> was, yeah, well, I've got, yeah, yeah, I've got a dog. But yeah. um, but there was a period where we were we were allowed to go to work, and um, mm. so my studio was you know it was our uh, you know work. So me, Robbie, and Gary got together. We spent we had six weeks of um, writing and recording uh, demos. So we have got. We have material for our next album, which hopefully we're, we're going to start recording in September mm-hmm. this year. So uh, there will Excellent. there is. Do you have a title for the album? Well. You, can you tell us the title, or you don't no. have a title? No, <laughs> okay. no idea. The, the title the titles for LPs have decided like four weeks Last after minute. they've been recorded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like they they decided when the printer wants to know what to print on the sleeve. Yeah, <laughs> <No>. yeah. <laughs> It's like a visual artwork, uh, however that might be. You know, you, you create your artwork and then you title it. You know, a lot of artists do that. It's not like I'm going to have a title yeah. and now I'm going to create this uh, 3D or, or 2D, you know, visual art. You know, you just come up with it, come up with a name for your work at the end. So you've been pretty busy because you also worked on another album with um, Hiroshka. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah. And uh, that's the second yeah. album. And that that sounds yeah. like it's pretty much completed because that comes out in July. Yeah, that that um that was um we'd also um started recording that just as uh, coronavirus was starting to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we ended up recording uh, finish finishing that just recording wise finished it just as the lockdown in England was coming into effect. Okay. And uh, any last bits and bobs we had to, we had to record ourselves at home and then send them to um, the studio engineer who then had to take the studio apart and take it back to his home, basically. And so mm-hmm. he, his you know his uh, spare bedroom became the studio, oh. and we <laughs> we didn't see him. I haven't seen him since the last day of recording, and he, we told him to mix the whole thing because oh, okay. you know, mm-hmm. he was. He's the one with all the equipment. So, yeah. yeah, that's finished. The that album that that's uh, coming out in July. Excellent as well. During uh, the lockdown last year, you did a, um, a lockdown version of "I Melt with You," and the proceeds went to the National Independent Venue Association. So yeah. a lot, a lot of musical artists were pretty much out of work, unless you you know you had the opportunity to record an album. But uh, you know some bands may not have that opportunity, but so I'm assuming the organization um, helps musicians get back on their feet again. Is there anything you can tell us about the organization? I know it's through yeah, donation. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, uh, ne- I mean, not, not only is it the the musicians who um, were suddenly out of work, it was, you know, I mean, you know, every time you see a concert, there's the lighting oh, guy, yeah. there's the tour manager, mm-hmm. there's the catering, there's, um, you know, the monitor person you know the monitor man or monitor woman that yeah, side of the yeah. stage that mm-hmm. makes sure you know it's like there's i mean so so much happens you know backstage yeah to make the performance of the concert and the enjoyment of the audience and um you know quite quite often when um you know people go to concerts you you don't consider those people you know how um you know how the amount of work they put. I mean, someone has, you know, when you turn up at a venue, there's some guy who's been there since like 
11 o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, to make sure that the doors are open when the band and yeah. the crew and the PA and yeah, and you have people, people so. uh, w- waiters and waitresses, cooks, mm-hmm. cleaners, parking lot attendants. I mean, you've got all those people. Yeah, we were last Absolutely. night, we were watching the um, the pink documentary, it's a new documentary on oh, the okay, set. and it's a behind the scenes of her last tour, so you get to see. Oh, wow. everything that has to go on to to make mm-hmm. the show especially her show yeah. she's got the acrobatics going on oh wow but she did mention yeah. she has like 150 people i think that are depending on her you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah there, yeah there's a lot of people behind the scenes that yeah a lot of people don't yeah. think of yeah when you go to a concert you're just thinking of the band but um a lot of people when we did our uh after the snow concert for um you know the dvd most of the people that worked on the the crew the stage the the film people the recording the audio people i mean they that was their first day that they'd worked in like nine months oh yeah as well yeah. you know they, it was like you're watching these people like you know people who um you know hump equipment around you know push mm-hmm. stuff you know they hadn't, they hadn't seen each other for like months and months yeah. Yeah, and uh, for them it was just uh, you know confirmation that you know what they do is just as important you know mm-hmm. as right. you know if they if they weren't there none of us would have been there. Yeah, it's revitalizing for them. It's rejuvenating for them. Good to get out. Yeah, yeah. So we've talked so much about music, so much about music. Mick, what are you doing when you're not making music? What else? What else are you? Any making? hobbies? <laughs> Uh, well, um, it, it's you know it's like right right now it's all a bit uh, strange because uh, I, I'm over here in uh, uh, New York with uh, my fiance Michelle, who's also the Modern English Tour Manager. So, um, oh, that's you know, we've known each other for yeah, years. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, in the UK, I uh, we um, have uh, uh, we we live on a small boat with um, uh, a dog. Basically, really? and uh, we kind of, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't see that coming. I yeah, thought you yeah. were going to say, you know, about a nice little stone home up in the hills. But no, you live on a boat. Excellent. What's yeah. your dog's name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skipper. <laughs> <laughs> on the go. boat. So you do a lot of fishing on the boat? Well, uh, no, no, no fishing. Just, uh, you know, walking. And uh, I mean, okay. also, I have a studio quite, quite close by. Mm-hmm. And um, pretty much it's like a... I I I um, live and breathe music. Really. Yeah, I, okay. I, I'll That's watch great. news watch news programs and read the newspapers, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I like um, thing um, things that interest me. You know, like uh, nature, art, architecture. Right. You know, hanging out with friends, and um, right. you know, so I'm in two bands at the moment. Yeah. So you know, yeah, I, yeah, I, I must really busy. like music. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just checking that out because the boat, that's what I was fishing for, something like the boat. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in yeah. New York State, uh, we have a, an old friend that went to a college up in Oneonta, New York, at Hartwick College. And uh-huh. that's pretty much the center of, of New York State, but uh, some beautiful places up there, too, as well, to, uh, yeah. yeah, travel around, see. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, we're, we're just on the other side of the river, from uh, the Catskill Mountains, and uh, you yeah. know it's it's gorgeous up here. You know, we we me and Michelle, we um, you know, we we do lots of exploring. You know, going out, looking, and yeah. seeing what's going on uh, in the countryside. Yeah, excellent. As well, excellent. So, um, anything we missed? Do you think that you wanted to talk about, or have we covered? Well, I mean, I I think uh, uh, I mean one thing that we are excited about is we we are actually touring. We're beginning to, you know, we have dates, but we start mm-hmm. on the uh, 31st of August okay. in the Turf Club, Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. And then we're um, kind of like going around, you know, the east side. We're okay. playing in uh, Detroit, Chicago, New York, Asbury Park. Yeah, oh, okay. We're playing in yeah. September, you know, if you're nearby, pop by. Yeah. What is the and, uh, venue in Asbury Park? Asbury Lanes. Oh, okay. I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Yeah. Sounds like a bowling alley. Yeah. But... Whenever I hear that name. But you know, it's a... <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? Uh, yeah. No, tell us about it. I mean, I, I, I played there before. It's actually, um, I think it used to be a bowling alley. Okay. That would make yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, the, 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 you know, when, when you play venues and it's got bar and grill written after it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
At least, at least I'm going to get some food. <laughs> <laughs> so where where can our listeners find Modern English? I mean, you have a website. Uh, I know you have an Instagram. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we have a Facebook page okay. as well, Modern English. Facebook. And then they can uh, check out the dates uh, for the upcoming shows and... Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, also, we do have a website. It's modernenglish.me, M-E, which is okay. like pretty out there. Quite easy to find. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Excellent. Thank you, Mick. Excellent. It was great talking to you. Brilliant. Great, uh, great talking to you as well. Hopefully, we'll see you. See you live. Yeah. All right. Take care. Okay. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank okay. you, right. Mick. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Today's interview was recorded on Zoom and at Did You Say 7 Studios in Washington, New Jersey. Go to the YouTube channel for exclusive video content. You can find Jim and Mike Talk Music on Apple Music, Spotify, Podbean, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Exit music by the band 99%. Today's show was produced and edited by Jim Thatcher. The songs Moonbeam, Grief, Gathering Dust, Melt With You, and Ricochet Days. Use your permission from Mick Conroy.